Alright, it's our second match here in Group C. In the right side, we've got Dragon Phoenix Gaming's Cure. Let's see if he's got the panacea for, of course, the infestation, the disgusting cancerous race that spreads all over the map, literally using tumors. It's Team Liquid's a laser. Still, there's a part of me that's not quite used to saying Team Liquid a laser, even though they've been together for a while now. It's just, uh, it's cool. I, I love that Liquid did pick him up and that he's representing them so well. He has a, a rich history in the game. I remember Young Elaser coming up and saying, I'm going to be the next life. You know, I'm, I'm, you know, he's an inspiration to me. That was, that was before life did some naughty things. Keep that in mind. <laughs> but stylistically, the, the kind of just constant aggression, very fast. And a lot of you might not remember it, but Elaser used to be a prodigy in terms of his speed of play. Mechanically, he was pretty much the fastest Zerg for a while around 2015, when he was first coming up, 2016. Now, it's kind of funny because Rainer and Serral and uh, Clem and a few of these guys, like obviously Dark in the Korean scene, have taken the speed of play to an entirely another level where a laser doesn't look quite as fast as them and definitely not quite as clean and organized as them in, in chaotic situations. But he's very capable of, of punching on with the big boys and he's very good at planning his build. So for a laser, I would say he's definitely had his career defined in the last few years by some moments where a series looks good and then you know the cookie crumbles ever so quickly when things don't go his way but by god is it being punctuated by amazing performances gsl versus the world one of those tournaments where when he goes over to korea has upset a lot of the top dogs with great preparation and fantastic play and uh a laser's characteristic strategy for those who don't know is uh building 4,000 drones so even if you kill 20 or 30 it doesn't even matter. He, uh, it's, it's Rocky Balboa Zerg. It's punch me in the face because you can take as many brain cells as you want. I'll just, I'll just make more, which to be fair, that part's not really accurate to Rocky. Um, but <laughs> in that case, there's just not that many to take. But anyways, Reaper Micro doesn't really get any kills here. The Zerglings do pull back. Third command center does go up on the high ground. Now, for those who don't know, uh, Tails was what we flipped the coin on. And Cure picked uh, heads, so he lost. So we've got Central Game 1, US West Game 2, and Central Game 3. Coin flip thing to decide. Uh, always a, a fun little thing, but it's the only way to make it fair, since there is a slight advantage on Central for the Europeans, a slight advantage for the Koreans on US West. Usually it's not too extreme. It does vary a little bit player to player. So there are edge cases where it's more meaningful than others. But I would say the, uh, the type of gameplay matters as well. And my god, is that a third gas? QR, are you going to two-port BC, lad? I mean, he could just play a normal mech build, but usually when I see that quick third gas, I'm expecting a second starport, a fusion core, and the two-port BC build has been ravaging nerds lately. It is a nasty build order. I think it was Rainer who pulled it out the other day as well. Uh, or, or, sorry, not Rainer. Um, <laughs> I don't know. He plays Zerg. It was... Um, Oh man, I can't even remember right now. But someone did this the other day in this tournament. Indeed, Fusion Core goes down, but no second Starport. Okay, so this is a bit of a tamer version. This is just single Starport BC. Very likely into mech play. A laser? Oh, man, I feel like he's an expert at taking out mech back in the day. So th 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 there's, 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 two th there's two things going through my mind. What, number one is Europeans say mech's really bad. And part of that is because they're really good at shutting it down. Therefore, mech should be bad versus Europeans. However, counterpoint... Because of that, none of the Terrans on EU, especially Clem and Hero Marine, the top two dogs, they never play mech. And as a result, the Europeans never get to practice against mech. So what's really interesting in that situation is a laser might technically know what to do, but he's going to be rusty as all hell on actually executing it. I'm hoping there's some, I don't know, Ziggy or someone out there on the ladder at a high enough MMR that's still giving him regular practice versus mech because Cure is going to ex execute it on an entirely another level. The Zerglings cannot get into Scout. The Vikings pushing back the Overlords. You can see they're all retreating. Look at this. He's pulling his Ring of Vision inwards. All of these Overlords are being pulled back here by a laser. Doesn't want to give any more kills to those. He's got six, uh, sorry, eight Queens. Ninth Queen on the way. He's got a pretty well-timed Lair. And it is only a single battle cruiser. Let's take a look at a laser's queen grouping. He's already got two queens in the main. He'll need a few more up there for when that battle cruiser teleports in. Often the BC teleports in the main. If you have a spore and three or four queens there, it gets shut down. But 
showing no sign of realizing that's the case. A laser does drop. Oh, that's that spore crawler timing is specifically to stop BCs. One in the main, one in the third. He's got a pretty good queen split. He doesn't have a lot of queens in the main, but with the spore crawler coming up right on time, I think he's going to just barely be okay. Ling's going for a bit of a run by right now. So far, Kua has not lost a single unit. He's just shooing them away, and the Battlecruiser teleports in the back of the main. Two queens and a Spora there. A laser pulls his queens right underneath it, maybe going a little bit too far forward. The drones immediately evacuate. One of those queens is going to be going down there, so not a bad pick off to start. Kua doesn't take a lot of damage, but oh, a Spore trick to save that. Nicely done by a laser, and the Battlecruiser does lose a few hit points. Meanwhile, Hellion's on the front. Lovely queen split for a laser, and a very nice Ling run by, but look at that! A Marine in the in the mineral line there and there, combined with the Hellions, and not a single SCV goes down. Battlecruiser comes in, the natural queens are already there. A laser did lose a lot of mining time. He just got back to mining in the main, and he's lost a lot of his vision control. Overall, though, not taking any significant damage. Double armories on the way. Q has got a second and third factory. If he can get a fourth command center up in the near future as well, he can definitely contest in the long game. But the Spire is almost finished. No Roach Warren just yet. A laser definitely needs to get a move on with that Roach Warren. I mean, seeing more Hellions come out, he's got to realize that that's the case. Let's go to a laser's camera. Take a look at his point of view. He just threw a Roach Warren down in his natural. He's trying to drone his fourth base up. Still has plenty of queens nearby. I love how quick he's been on pulling those drones away. And those queens are chasing the battle cruiser. He's got plenty of lings here, but that is quite a few Hellions. Oh, he goes for the trap, trying to make it so the Hellions can't escape. With the queens coming in as well. Great catch for a laser. Cure not finding any room in this game. And that's a very good start for a laser. Yamato's on the way. Double upgrades are on the way. Another BC coming in, but the queen split's been good. Four queens up there at the fourth base, ready to deal with that one. A few drones go down. Eight drones in total, but that was the Hellions sacrificing their lives, as well as the BC having to teleport home. Did go back where it can repair up in that mineral line. This other BC only got one kill. Looks like one queen has gone down. Overall units lost tab looking very good for the Zerg, though. You're meant to be behind in units lost. The fact that Elaze's got a healthy fifth base coming on up. He's got Corruptors to deal with the BCs. That's a lovely start for him. Blue Flame as well as Transformation Servos on the way. Wow, Servos? Really? For those who don't know, Servos is the upgrade that allows you to swap Hellions into Hellbats very quickly. It allows you to land Vikings. It allows Thors to pull out those big anti-air uh, anti weapons quicker. Roach Speed and Roaches are now starting up. No Baneling Speed either. That is what's missing for a laser, right? The, the lack of roach speed or having roaches out. His creep control is not great. But Corruptors are going to fly across the map. He might go for a bit of a PP here. For those who've never been around a, a bunch of drunk poles. Um, yeah, some of them have picked some stuff up, I think, from, from British tourists. Uh, sometimes there is a little bit of public urination involved. Um, what can I say? The Australian and, and kind of British culture getting through to them a little bit. But, oh, okay. Nice Yamato. One, two, three. Yamato's goes down. And the Corruptors, they kind of hand the, the Battlecruiser tax over. I like that. A laser. It's one of those people who contacts the IRS ahead of time to let them know about the uh, the debts. <laughs> Rather than waiting for them to chase him down, the Battlecruisers will be happy about that. They're like, I guess we don't even need to fly across. We can just hang out at home on the defensive. Fourth Command Center does fly over to the left side as well. Up to five factories with a sixth and a seventh on the way is Cure. He's got to be a little careful with that factory placement as he could wall himself off, but he's got a two-space avenue there, which anything can fit between. Uh, Hellions on the north looking good. Bane speed, Ravages, and Roach's speed is on the way. Elaze's got a perfect setup. The question is, what can he do with it? If there's one thing I've been vocally critical of top European players for compared to Koreans is the uh, inability to sometimes capitalize on leads they've got. And whilst Elaze does feel like he's had a very good kind of play so far, I'm not sure if he's got the ability to go and kill or capitalize on this against Cure in any way. See what the long-term plan is. Hellion's trying to squeeze past these queens. They'll get a couple drones, but Lings and Queens should be dealing with that. <clears throat> Only four drones and a couple Zerglings. Not the best trade for those Hellions. Ravager Corruptor coming forward. I'd like to see a laser take out that Widow Mine. Ooh, there's only three tanks on the map. Oh, I don't think he wants to be doing that PP, though. The Ravagers are coming in. He's going to try and bile this down. Biles all across both the Command Center and the Battlecruiser. He actually manages to kill the CC with a beautiful wave of Biles. One of the BCs goes down as well, and those BCs are sacred. Now, obviously, he traded a lot of Corruptors. He's lost nine Corruptors. But remember, he lost three of those earlier to the BCs. That was six Corruptors for a BC and the very important fourth base. That is huge. 
because Kua is going to struggle to secure a fifth and sixth base on this map. But to get in and deny the fourth base, that's something you don't usually get an opportunity to do. He managed to do it. A laser's now got his hive on the way and his upgrades are finally getting on the board. Plus one range, plus one melee. They've been very slow to get up so far, but upgrades aren't that important versus mech. Obviously, they'll become important the longer the game goes, but it's all about just getting a big enough economy up and protecting that economy is kind of important. Hellion's coming to do get eight drones, but a laser, nine more drones instantly in the production tab to rebuild that. BC's in the north of the map. They should have their tack jump ready. Notice they want to hide, though, until their Yamato's ready because they don't want to have to teleport home until Yamato's ready. They want to fly in, Yamato three corruptors, and then teleport out of there. Pathogen Glands is on the way for the Infestors. Another Widow Mine should be going down to those two Biles. And this is 13 Ravagers. Now, the problem with 13 Ravagers is each Ravager is three supply, the same as a Siege Tank. I don't know if you, you guys have ever seen 13 Siege Tanks fighting. <laughs> I think he has the same bot button for Creep as he does for uh, Corrosive Biles. So that was a misclick there, guys. <laughs> he Biles down his own Creep Tumor. Oh, round two of PP. Quick lift. If, if he mass repairs and pulls it out of range. You can see it breaks the PP. The Corruptors are gonna have to pull back though. They're out of position. The BC's hiding in the corner. Oh, they're gonna have that pay dividends. The Corruptors are trying to fly home. But look at these three BCs. They get two drones. They take out some Queens. They're focusing down a whole pack of Overlords. Lovely damage. And that's a frustrating turn of events for a laser getting a bit too eager with his Corruptors. And the battle cruisers are going to easily teleport out of there. Oh, Kua! Kua a little bit slow there. He waited to get a Yamato off. Almost loses two BCs. Loses another one. That's a huge problem. He's down to just two BCs. I would say a laser, though, on 16 Corruptors is too many. But you got to keep in mind, he's got the Greatest Spire. So that's actually acceptable. The problem he's having is his melee upgrade. He's only just got plus one melee. He really needs plus two because plus three armor is coming in. When you have plus three armor, Thors have four armor. Right now, Broodlings do four damage plus one is five damage. So they're only going to do one damage a hit. Zerglings only two damage a hit to Thors and Siege Tanks. That's not good. That is, of course, once plus three armor finishes. We're not there just yet. Way too many Corruptors right now. A laser's ground army can't really contest this. He's going to try and move to that right side. Ravagers can smash these tanks. I'm surprised he didn't take these rocks down already. The Ling Ravager, if it can fight anywhere where the Hellbats aren't, that'll be massive. Kua sees this army. He's got some Hellbats and Cyclones there. Depot and an Assimilator, or Refinery, sorry, are taking a big wave from the Biles. Plus two melee and uh, plus two range on the way. Adrenal Glands is finished. No Infestors on the field yet, but my god, that's a giant army. The way you defend this is Banelings. A laser needs to morph Banelings and roll them into the Hellbats. That is 21 Hellbats. He hasn't morphed a single Baneling. He's making Broodlords in the middle of this map. Great wave of Biles, but doesn't land too many of them. Only a few in the middle of those Hellbats. He still hasn't made any Banelings. I, I think he's got to make Banelings. He's also got way too many Queens. 11 Queens. These units are really not going to work out well, except for supporting the Broodlords. And the Broodlords do finish just barely in time. And now, with 11 Queens stacked full of energy, there to transfuse them. That is a very effective timing. I thought it was very dangerous, but he makes it. Corruptors are going to fly in on the bottom left. These guys do have tack jump ready. Cure better be quicker on it this time around. And indeed, it looks like he will be. He's going to teleport to the north side up near the army. The Queen's respreading Crete. The Broodlords are going to push north. Laser wants to deny this fifth base. I told you guys he'd be rusty against Mech. Well, he doesn't look rusty at all. The Laser looks like he's played against this recently. He clearly has these timings mapped out in his head before he goes to them. But look at this. Kua says, I can't defend this army. I know I can't. So he's splitting his army down the flanks of the map. He's going to try and snipe the bases. He's going to give up his fifth while he's waiting for his Thors to build. And he's going to try and go do some big damage. There is five spine crawlers here that can buy a little bit of time. Kua can siege the base, but Ling Ravage is a very fast army. He's responding really quickly. Kua, he's still got the army in the top left as well. The Broodlord Queen does take out that planetary. He's going to keep pushing in there. Ravages and Lings want to deal with this. But the Hellbats out front, that is going to be very risky. A laser needs to figure out which side he's going to defend because I don't think he can defend both of them. He's going to engage in the bottom right. The Hellbats do ta get taken out by the Banelings. Bile's taken out the Siege Tanks and he's got to frantically get back to the left side to defend his drones. Broodlords are moving in along with the Corruptor Queen, but there's BCs and Thors building up. A laser has to worry about getting jumped on on the front by the Antia and he's got to protect his drone economy. Already 19 workers have gone down. That hatchery will 100% fall. Meanwhile, on the front, the Battle Cruisers, they are going to take yet another BC tax. The Corruptors are getting hammered by the Thors. A laser does take out the fourth base. He's doing a lot of damage, but... These queens are off creep, which means no more transfuse. Broodlord's doing a lot of damage. The Lings and the Ravagers will clean this up. A laser has a giant bank 
I just realized how big that bank is, and that makes me feel pretty good for his position. His supply looks so bad for a little bit, which of course was not great. He definitely, I think, wishes he left a queen or two injecting because he's just lost a hatchery or two. He's trying to build more corruptors. I like, if he gets his queens and broods out, he's fine, but oh, these queens are going to get caught. Q is going to find him. He sees those very slow exclamation marks trying to leave the sensor tower range. And he's like, no, 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 no. You get back here, you silly queens. I'm not going to let you walk away from this one. The Thors, the BCs, and the Hellbats chasing after it. Q has got a giant army. A laser needs Banelings. If he can just roll Banelings into the Hellbats, it's just Thors and tanks. And Blinding Cloud, Neural, any of that would work. He's not going any spellcasters, though. Ravages can, can, can hold on, but a laser needs to max out. He's building 12 more roaches right now. I think he's got to give up this base. Losing those drones, though. Ooh, these are all orbitals. There's a, a new planetary there. A single Zergling gets into top base with plus two melee. That's going to do a lot of damage to those Zerglings. You can see, okay, SCVs did take it down. Bailing Ravager coming in. The Biles take out a Thor, but a good spready here from Cure. The Broodlord's coming in from behind as well, though. They're taking out the Siege Tanks and the Hellions. I think he's got to pull back. This is not the best fight for a laser by any means. He's landing some good Biles, but overall, the angle is so good. So good for the, just the spread of Thors. But the Broodlord Roach is starting to break through. Oh my god, this is insane. The supply looks terrible for a laser. Cure is broke. But a laser just doesn't have the lava. Oh, pulling every queen across the map was a huge mistake. But look at this. It's, he's still got PP. He still has the power of PP, a full bladder, one of the most underrated weapons of an angry Zerg player. The Corruptor's trying to take this down. The Thor's desperately trying to defend. The Hellion Roach Ravager, though, is like, no, we'll keep this up. If he can keep this base alive, it'll be huge for Cure. But the Ravager's distracting. The Thor's need to turn and fight. The base goes down. Massive snipes on two of the very important bases that we're trying to pop back up on this map. Unfortunately for a laser, his lava count is still way too low, and he's not, he's not got many. He's just rebuilt some queens. He started injecting, but he's worked his way through the bank and his income just isn't there. Cure realizing he can just outlast a laser if he just keeps dropping mules now. Broodlords, oh my god, he's morphing harassment broodlords. A sign of desperation if I've ever seen one. And he's making 11 infestors with Neural and Burrow. A laser realizes that this game is not looking good. He's going to try and deny the income on this fifth base locations. And say, okay, you can mine the four bases, but he knows it'll get mined out from mules pretty quickly. So if he can deny this base and then steal all the Thors and tanks. Basically, it's going to be one big burrow ambush to win the game. And in a messy game, that could definitely work. Corruptor P comes in again, but nice lift and save. For those who don't know, there is actually a technique, a micro technique to stop dying of that. Oh, an orbital goes down. That's part of the detection. Remember, he won't have that many scans. I'll tell you guys about the technique to avoid uh, losing command sensors to uh, Corruptor P. Ooh, good fungal catch, but that does reveal that you've gone infestors. Ling's trying to run into this base. Tank will take those out. Two Lings for one SCV. Not a bad trade. These harassment broodlords doing pretty well. I'd like to see a laser pull them back and save them. Because they will... You can see how well a Thor does versus broodlords, guys. So 3-3 three, three Thor versus plus one air attack, plus two melee broodlords. Two broodlords go down. The broodlings starting to get a little bit of damage done in there. But as I said, four armor versus six attack damage broodlings. The broodlings are only doing two damage and nibble. So the lack of plus three melee does really hurt a laser in that scenario. Hellion run by trying to come down that left side. Back up to 48 drones is a laser. He's going to need to transfer these workers down to this base now that that's back up. Corruptors coming in along with the Zerglings. You've got to get out of the range and then come back and quickly land it. But obviously with Zerglings here, that's not going to work. You can see normally you queue it to move back and then you queue it up to land. And in a single sequence of actions, you can save a command center. In this case, that one's going to go down though. And that is a very valuable snipe. He has five orbitals, soon to be four orbitals. As that is a very good snipe. But the fresh base mining means the income and the income potential of Cure is way better. Cure is on... 11 Thors. There's 11 Infestors. Coincidence? I don't think so, guys. If he can neural most of these Thors, a laser could make a miraculous comeback. He has a way worse army right now. Oh, he just showed his Infestors! No! A laser just bumbled in range of those units. Now he's going to go for it anyway. The Q is aware of it. He's scanning. Great neurals go down anyway. Oh my god. Oh, oh my god. He saw the Infestor and yet despite that, He's still getting absolutely annihilated by the neural. Oh my god. What? It looked like Kua saw it. He should have been 
instantly scanning and focusing down the infestors, but Kua must have had his camera elsewhere. He mustn't have seen it. We saw his army move, and it made me think that he'd seen it and reacted, but apparently he hadn't. Oh, it's not over till it's over, though, guys. Remember that Elaze's economy is so fragile, and Kua comes here and breathes hot fire over the face of Elaze. Elaze, I wish he'd burrowed there, because I don't think there's actually many scans for his opponent, the Corruptors, and the Broodlord return here. What a scrappy game. This is why I love a laser using every single tool in his arsenal to turn this into an absolute barn burner of a match. The Hellions are going to try and run there as well. Ooh, 22 drones have gone down. Okay, Hellions getting just two more workers. That was really good defense. Corruptors are going to get in there and have a bit of a snipe as well. The Broodlord's starting to take them down. The Infestors, the Ravagers, the Lings, and the Queens moving around the map. We've got Hellions trying to rotate and see if they can keep him back. But what's he got behind it? Siege tanks? A couple Cyclones and a Thor? There, he's only got one tank here. A laser can just kill this base. He can just kill this base. The Planetary's got big splash damage, but that is going to be huge right now. The, the tank does go down. Biles on top of the Planetary in the tank. That is a massive snipe. I can't believe this. this okay. Twitch chat, your chance to name this Broodlord. That Broodlord has been a hero. He goes down there, but oh my god, will he, he he's going to have the full honors for his burial. That Broodlord there was an absolute hero. I mean, that is that is an absolute beast. Careful though. He knows about your investors, dude, but oh, he oh man. Three tanks get stolen. They all start shooting each other. A laser with the Infestor comeback of legends in this game. And you know what? There's just no mining left. Look at this. He's got four mineral patches there. He's got two mineral patches there that are about to run out. This is a nasty situation to be in for Cure with no Liberators or Ghosts. It is always very hard to deal with Infestors. But it's always about being sieged up with your tanks and just focusing them with the scan very early on in the fight. If they steal all your units before you get to do that, it's pretty much over, but I really thought he knew that army was right there. He definitely had seen part of it. But as it is now, Q has got one big scary army. There's always a chance to take that perfect mech fight. Oh, there's a turret. Watch out. Watch out, a laser. Pulls back very quickly. Nice reaction for a laser as well. Roach Ravager trying to engage. Here we go. Oh, no, no, no. A laser. That's not the angle you want to go on, buddy. A laser did not realize how many units there were there. But he does get a triple bile on three siege tanks. Man, a laser just threw away so many units, though. A laser just threw away so many units. Another Ravager goes down. Oh, man. That, that series of engagements really sucked for a laser. He knows about the mules. And that's why a laser just panicked because he's so worried about the mules on this base that he felt like he needed to break it right now. Ling's coming in. Very effective way to use those eight infestors. I think Swarm Hosts would have been the game changer a little while ago in this low economy scenario, but most players just aren't used to playing them and they are a very low momentum unit. Oh, two infestors go down instantly. Neurals are starting to land. Some Biles go down. Oh, I think a laser feels like he can't compete with this base. I actually think a laser here is, is getting way over eager. He's down to just four infestors. I can't believe Cure is back in this game. That fight up that ramp was so bad for a laser. As I said, there's always the chance for the perfect engagement from mech units. And, uh, and, and Elazer's had such a bad economy for so long. Just because he won three or four fights in a row in a really one-sided fashion doesn't mean he's going to keep winning fights like that. We saw what happens the moment a, a Zerg army clumps up into splash damage. Hellions on the left side. Hellions on the left side. One Roach. Not going to defend that. It's only five Roaches. A Zergling four infestors on this map. Oh, damn. This is devastating damage. So many failed Hellion run buys, but the few that do get through make it all worth it. Hellions on the right at the same time. Oh, my God. What an insane game. That was so back and forth. A laser looked so behind, then so ahead, then so behind, then so ahead. Cure did not give up. Relentless with the Hellion run buys, and he does score the victory in the first map. Right, well, that was a pretty crazy game. It looked like he just uh, did a bit better than a laser in the mid game, but despite his split push doing a lot of damage, he took a lot of economy damage. And Dragon Phoenix Gaming's cure looked like he was in trouble when that army got stolen by the infestors, but the power of orbital command centers and mules against a Zerg whose economy was dragging itself along on the floor, mortally wounded and bleeding from much earlier in the game. A laser never really got back above 50 workers, so. Team Liquid's Elaser did amazing things with harassment broodlords, harassment corruptors. I mean, fantastic infester usage just to keep himself alive in that game. 
I think for him it's it's just, okay, let's not find ourselves losing so many bases to a split Terran push in the first place. And that is a tricky thing to do. Broodlord Corruptor Queen's very supply heavy. I think there's also an argument that a laser, if he kept just two or three queens injecting rather than bringing 11 queens to the middle of the map, he would have had much more lava to spend that giant bank that he'd worked up earlier rather than him having to trickle the bank out. And I think one quick remax may have just won a laser the game. The problem for him is that it wasn't one quick remax. It was a handful of roaches, a handful of lings, another handful of roaches and lings. And so Cure was afforded a lot of time to do with what he would. Now this is command center first for Cure on this map into double gas. So it's a tech heavy opening. And whenever I see Command Center first, whenever I see Inside Out, I'm always thinking about tanks here. I'm thinking about tanks here, tanks here, and Bio just pushing through the middle of the map. I'm thinking about the two base tank pushes as a very real threat. Something where you can open up with a few Hellions, a Viking, and then just do a, a three racks Marine tank push. It's very difficult to stop on this map and Data C. A laser moving out for the third base. Notice that he's going quick link speed. That's interesting. So a laser's not opting for the super quick third. He's actually going 28 third base, but ling speed is so early that I think a laser might be planning a ling ravager attack this game, where he wants the ling speed to do run buys with, and then he'll go forwards from there. Now, Kiwa played um, something he does quite often, is if he's planning a hellbat timing or a battlecruiser timing, he'll just keep all of his hellions at home. He won't be very aggressive, and he'll just deny the zerg scouting. That's something he's really big on. That's why the last game... A laser kept running Zerglings in one at the time and just could not get any vision. The Zergling's gonna run up the ramp. Oh, lets him ride in. Zerg, Zergling's happy to see everything. He knows there's no third command center with that starport timing. Still not back onto gas in the main. I'm droning very hard. Up to two queens, third and fourth on the way. Creep starting to spread forwards. A couple Zerglings out here on the edges. First two Hellions entering the map at two, 3 minutes 25. Going straight for a third and fourth, and it looks like a Banshee soon to follow that up. Now, I said the quick Ling speed might be for a Ling backstab, but there's no sign of extra Zergling production this game. I think a laser might have done that if he thought it was a three command center. He might have held down a, lot, a Zergling key, done a Zergling run by when the Hellions are harassing him, and then gone for a big surprise wave of Roaches. But seeing someone who's already got a quick starboard up, no third command center, there's a good chance that he's going to play Banshees. As a result, you're like, eh, just play a macro game. And a laser hadn't committed anything other than the, the quick ling speed. So he's in a safe spot. He's going to go up to 11 Zerglings to stop the Hellions running past. Good Overlord vision as well. Cure. He's just building depots. Third CC starts up. Man, a is so good with his ling scouting. Gets in, even bites the SCV a few times, just nibbles his butt and uh, does get on out of there. The Hellion's now going for a four Hellion pressure. Notice the factory's paused production, which makes it look like he's done. So it is just six Hellions and the two Banshees, and he's going to go into the extra barracks and engineering bays behind that. So very stock standard bio play. Remains to be seen if it'll be Widow Mines or Tanks supporting that. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Oh, a Laser's Queen's way out of position here. Ooh, he does pull some Lings up the ramp, which buys himself a little bit of time. That's very nicely done. And I like that he doesn't actually pull the drones in panic. So he doesn't really line up any big juicy targets. Oh god, I, I, I may have spoken too early, but no! Only five workers go down. That's a really good hold for a laser. And look, he's already holding the drone key down. Should be injecting pretty hard in the aftermath. He's building spores right now. Those spores are very late. So this Banshee could get damaged, but the spore is one of the quickest defensive structures in the game. Only 21 seconds to make. It's going to be able to kill four or five workers, but not too much more than that, especially if a laser runs these drones away. Maybe even transfuses one of them. Yep, there you go. I told you he'd transfuse. <laughs> Laser does like that move. <laughs> Queen's coming in from both sides. No lair just yet, though. Lair only now starting. So these Banshees can just hang out in between the bases and be a nuisance. Kind of low on energy, though. So not able to do too, too much. Siege tanks on the way. Fourth and fifth barracks and double upgrades are started up. Laser's definitely been slowed down by this harassment. Even though he's got what appears to be a healthy worker advantage, a good Queen count, his tech just feels very late. Banshees take a bit of damage, but grabbing another three workers brings it up to 11 drones in total. And the way you get ahead in this scenario as a Zerg is you take advantage of the fact that this is the only pressure. And that means your creep needs to spread non-stop to punish the Terran for throwing the Hellions away. A laser has not done that. And as a result, he's not getting the kind of secret lead 
that you really should be getting if the Terran throws their Hellions away. He's so occupied defending the Banshees. Q is doing such a good job keeping him busy with that, that Elaze is not able to have the APM to perfectly spread creep. He's starting to do it, and he's getting some new tumors over here. Does barely save his fourth base. Double Evo Chamber's on the way. Lair's finished, so we should expect Baneling speed here. Only 61 drones for a laser as he goes for a fourth and a fifth hatchery at the same time. If one of those goes down, it's not the end of the world. You can transfer drones to the other. But a double tank marine push. Ooh, he's got his eyes set on either this spot or this spot. And that is, yeah, uh, this base is no longer tenable. There's no way a laser can defend that. His best shot is to do run buys and then double down on defending the bottom right side. Because that tank position... It's so hard to stop. And look at this. The laser sees it at the last second. The tanks are already in the corner. Oh, that's nasty, man. And the Marines can get out in front. Burrow is on the way. A laser, a master of Burrowed Banelings. One of the best top players at using that. Queenslings and Banes coming on forward. They're going to try and defend this base. The Marines out in front with the Medivacs. Queens can buy time here. But very unlikely that Cure throws away many units. You can see the Queens as they get baited into the tank fire. Oh, he goes for the flank! A laser with a crazy move going for the flank on the Marines. He does force them to pick up, realizing that the Marines are the threat to actually kill the Zerglings. And he defends the hatchery. That was not something I thought was possible. I said it was untenable. I said there was no way. But he says, hey, I don't need Banelings or Baneling speed if I get a really nice surround and I let the Queens tank all of those early shots. Banelings morphing in range here. Luckily, the Marines were damaged enough that he is able to defend. The thing is, Q is still keeping him busy, and he's killing the hatchery in the bottom right. Good split on the queens here for a laser. If he could kill the banshees, that'd be really good. Hatchery on the left side goes down. One banshee falls on the right side. Nice hot pickup for Cure on the left. Plus two attacks already on the way. He hasn't shown any sign of what his next step is. Is he going to commit further to two base or three base attacks? Or is Cure going to drop that fourth command center, second factory? The laser, though, way down in the economy. 65 drone Ling Bane. It's not a position you want to be. His creep is pushed back into a corner. The pace that Cure sets, it's not something you get a lot of practice against. A laser's best bet is to kill the depot and try to get out, but the units come over, clean those Zerglings up. Five links for one SCV, a great trade for Cure. Units lost tab already looking well in his favor. Not quite double, but not far off. And that fourth base, well, guess what, guys? These burrowed Banelings better be the biggest boomies of all time. Let's watch this from Cure's camera. Actually, let's not watch this from Cure's camera because he might be looking somewhere else entirely. Oh my god! Oh, not a bad hit. Gets about 10 Marines there. Bruises a few of the other ones. There is a Ling Bane flank coming around the backside as well, but a laser says, I don't think I can defend this hatchery. A lot of overlords running in and dying. He's trying to come in with a flank, but it's mistimed. He wasn't quite ready. Can the Banelings get onto the Marines? Yes, they can. Even with a slight mistiming on the flank, a laser with the Burrowed Baneling setup holds this push, and a laser finds a way to survive, even though he is economically destitute. He is so poor. He wants to go do damage right now while he's got a bit of momentum because he knows that he's way behind on the income. He's got 2-2 two, two on the way, but it's nowhere near finish, and his income just absolutely sucks compared to Cure's. He is not able to get in on top of that mineral line. He does burrow a single Baneling there. A laser's a big fan of the single Banelings because his philosophy is that even a single Baneling will force the Terran to retreat, scare them, and get them to start scanning everywhere in panic. And that way, he's not committing as much as putting pairs of Banelings everywhere. The moment he shows the first Burrowed Banelings, he's very unlikely to ever drop a pair of Burrowed Banelings ever again for the rest of the game. He gives up that lethality for consistency, something which is very hard to understand for a lot of the people watching, but I guarantee you this is what pro gamers always look for in their play is consistency in their play. It's not, oh, but it'll look really cool on the highlight reel. That's only a bonus. There's nothing defending the left side. That double drop is looking like it might be a game winner. If he can kill that fifth base again, a laser's just got to 85 drones, and he can't afford any bad trades. Cure distracts the whole army on the right side. A laser needs to get to that left side. Well, he's very quick to scramble, actually. The creep spread giving him very good warning. And his 2 2's also done. A laser's going to roll over the right marines and the ones on the left, but they're all picked up. Rolling over them, not the same as actually impacting them. Cure just picks up. And he's going to start playing high ground, low ground. This is every Terran's favorite game, every Zerg's least favorite game. Uh, it's a, it feels a bit like you're getting bigger brothered when uh, they do this sort of style. He's dropped in the main as well. A laser asleep at the helm a little bit. His multitasking failing him. He did not notice that drop because he didn't have an overlord on the left side of the map. A gap in the vision. Getting punished massively. Focusing down the Sporecrawler and that position. Oh, 
So expensive to run into that. Oh, the unit's lost tab. Oh my god, nothing's dying for the Terran. So much is dying for the Zerg. One or two Marines for three drones, a sport, mining time, and about 20 Zerglings. A fantastic trade for Cure, who uses this time to establish a fourth base. He's got his 3-3 three, three upgrades on the way, and he's got a second factory that can build Widow Mines. This is a, a good setup for the Terran and a massive advantage for him. A laser does have a big income. He's building a second spawning pool. He thought this spawning pool might get focused down, so he's got a bit of insurance there. Three burrowed Banelings. Well, those boomies could be massive. He's going to go for a giant attack on the right side, but his army's spread out a little bit thin. Oh, he misses it. Oh, no, a laser too busy attacking on the front right now. The Ling Bane goes in. He misses the Burrowed Banelings. It looks like they tried to unburrow. Maybe they hit something, but not that many units. Oh, the Widow Mines cleanses Banelings. That means he's got no defense. This counterattack from him was so good, but the fact that he just lost every Baneling except these two is huge. The drones are going to have to run away. He's got to give that hatchery up. He cannot fight for that. The drones are trying to bait those, those Marines over. Here we go. Here we go. Here we go. Big boom. Massive burrowed Banelings. A laser pulling off amazing tricks. Game one and game two. It is absolutely a, a, a terrible, terribly sad story, though. A tragedy that he's having to do it from so far behind in both of these games. Both games, he is playing like a beast from behind. But he's already, he's starting the, the mid game where he does all this cool stuff from a situation where the other guy's already got his bloody, his arms around his throat. He's throttling him. A laser is way behind at half the army supply. He's, he's only on Ling Bane. This is not an army that scales well into the later stages. He's going to try and defend with Banelings, but these ones have been spotted. The Burrowed Banes do get caught. Those guys trying to retreat there. The run by looks like it will get dealt with the Mass Marine Marauder. So many medevacs, 12 medevacs on this map. These Lings get a few more SCVs, but Q has still got a healthy 60 SCV economy. It's, it's more than enough. The Burrowed Banelings trying to help out there. He's trying to get Q to walk on top. He sets him off, mostly only hitting Marauders. And the Marine Spready is just a bit too much. Q are showing his pedigree in this series and his hybrid nature in 2022. Able to play Mech, able to play Bio. Keeping this uh, guessing. And even with some nasty Burrowed Baneling hits, a laser unable to bring that one back. That's kind of crazy, guys. I'm actually just going to go back and quickly check the um, the triple banelings on the left side because I, I really want to see what happened there. I think it was about 12 minutes. So we're just going to... I want to see if this did end up hitting something because a lot happened all at once at this stage. Now, then this was... It's real unfortunate that so many of his banelings went down here. Oh, so he did get the tail end of the army. He missed the big juicy. If he landed that big juicy, I think a laser might have been in. And also, he didn't get the third Baneling detonation there. Oh, that's so unfortunate. That's so unfortunate. Oh, oh my god, it was a two for... It's a double tragedy, that one. He could have taken out most of that army with the Burrowed Banelings. And then the other Banelings could have at least killed the Widow Mines and then ran back and forth and bought a lot of time. But instead, they barely missed out and all three Widow Mines killed like every Baneling. Oh, that's a disaster. That could have got a laser back in the game. Because if he defends this base, he's on 87 workers. I mean, it's not great. It's five base. But it definitely gives him a much better shot. But this was essentially him being broken at this point. Well played by QR.